If you're thinking of setting up a solar energy project, the good news is that for domestic or other single building systems, solar panels are probably the most straightforward of all renewable energy technologies. This is the case for both types of solar, hot water and electric or photovoltaic. That said, solar, particularly hot water, is the renewable technology that suffers most from cowboy operators. But weeding out the bad guys is relatively straightforward. Firstly, you should definitely only contact installers that are registered with the microgeneration certification scheme. This is a government supported initiative designed to protect consumers. Once you've identified some potential contractors, it's time to do a bit more research. Reputable operators will almost certainly have websites. Check them out, investigate poor reviews, and take up references from previous customers. And, as with other building work of a similar scale, you should get at least three quotes from different installers. As a guide, an average domestic solar photovoltaic PV system costs in the region of six to eight thousand pounds. Your solar project may involve lots of people in your community, all installing solar systems. If so, it should be possible to negotiate a bulk buy discount. You could also consider setting up a cooperative to purchase solar panels and the associated kit from which members can buy at a discount. You do not need planning permission for solar panels on single dwellings. The government wishes to encourage their spread, so they're considered permitted developments. On flats and on commercial buildings, you'll probably need to seek permission. But unless the building is listed or in a conservation area, this is likely to be granted, particularly if they're relatively discreet. As described elsewhere in this resource, the feed-in tariff is a government scheme that rewards people or groups who generate renewable electricity. The introduction of feed-in tariff has opened up interesting opportunities for community groups to earn money from renewable energy projects, particularly PV. This is how it could work. Your group purchases solar panels, which you install on the roof or roofs of local homes, commercial premises or other buildings. The householder or business whose roof is being used benefits from cheap or free electricity. This is their rent, if you like. Meanwhile, the community reaps the feed-in tariff, which can be worth thousands of pounds a year, guaranteed for 25 years. This is index linked, which could be used to invest in other projects. But this kind of project should not be entered into lightly. It requires considerably more thought and management than single installations on buildings that you already own. So, what are the issues? Firstly, insurance. Do you have the correct cover? The panels may be yours, but they're on somebody else's roof. Who's liable if they fall off and injure someone? The contract. How long is the contract? And what assures both parties of the long-term deal? The payments. Does the owner or occupier of the building get free electricity or do they buy it at a discount? And how do you arrange for the owner or, or occupier of the building to pay you the feed-in tariff? Because it will be they who receive it. Compensation. If the panels stop working and the building occupier then has to pay for electricity that they were getting free, will you have arrangements in place to compensate them? What happens if the building changes hands and the new occupier doesn't want to continue with the relationship? What happens at the end of the contract? If the panels are still working after 25 years, when your feed-in tariff payments stop, does the building occupier get to keep them? Or will you come and remove them? Make sure that the arrangements you have with the building user don't effectively add up to a loan or higher purchase agreement. If they do, you will need a consumer credit license and you will need to ensure that building owners have been given a 7 to 14 day cooling off period after signing any agreement. Clearly, you will need to take legal advice and establish a good contract. You'll also need to be established as a legal entity, for example, a community interest company, or you won't be able to enter into any contracts except as individuals. Details of setting up a company are elsewhere in this resource. The introduction of the feed-in tariff has had a stimulating effect on the solar installation market. 
and companies across the country are approaching homeowners offering to install solar panels on their roofs. Usually the company offers to install the panels and receives the feed-in tariff, in return for which the homeowner gets free electricity. This is in essence the reverse of what we described before. Rather than your community renting out somebody else's roof space for panels and receiving the feed-in tariff, you would rent out your own roofs to somebody else. On the face of it, this can seem a perfectly valid offer, and in some cases it is. But check the small print. Not all of these schemes are clear about the questions we asked earlier. For example, who insures the panels and what happens if they stop working? The final point to remember is that unless the homeowner doesn't want the hassle or couldn't get the initial funding to pay for the panels, he or she will always be better off by installing the panels and keeping the feed-in tariff for themselves. So if such a scheme is doing the rounds in your area, perhaps there's an alternative, a more socially equitable scheme you could offer. How about cooperative purchasing of panels to get economies of scale, which would make that initial purchase price more affordable for everyone? Hopefully, this has given you plenty to think about. Thank you for watching.